just a quick little update. Uh, I said, no, I'm going to put off editing this video for a day. I'm sure there's nothing that'll happen in that 24 hours. So keep in mind, the video that I was recorded was taking place uh, around 8 p.m. yesterday, 7 p.m. yesterday. Uh, yesterday being 11, 20... Seven, two thousand twenty nine, uh, two thousand twenty two, <laughs> twenty nine. I found this on the web. Thank you, Siri. I appreciate it. He's a fucking idiot. Um. So yeah, eleven twenty nine, two thousand twenty two is when this video is taking place. A day after my video saying why Hugh Freeze was a fuck, and unfortunately Hugh Freeze has not been hired as head coach. Everything in this video, I think, is still applicable for the most part. Uh, Hugh Freeze is still a fuck. Armin is a fuck for hiring him. And uh, as you can see from the feedback from the hiring, it was a fuck move. This is for heaven. Um... What it is, what's up? Uh, forget the intro on the cut. Uh, so I've been driving for the last fucking six, seven hours or so. There's gonna be a lot of cursing this video, so keep that in mind. Um, and in that course, while well, very loosely following both Auburn basketball and Auburn football, both of which had events last 48 hours of relevance, uh, I did not notice once I got back to my apartment that there was any move on the head coaching search. And to that, I say, thank God, because as we all knew, the backup plan to Lane Kiffin uh, was Hubert Freeze. Hubert Freeze. And let me condition this. Auburn boosters, or not boosters, Auburn uh, plugs or sources, guys that are supposed to be in the know don't know shit about shit. All of them. You can ask, any, none of them know shit about shit. To basically listen to an Auburn individual that is sourced up is to like listen to a fucking wind or whistle in the fucking air. It's just... Let a wind listen to wind whistle in the fucking air. It's useless. It's a waste of time. Um, some do seem to get the scoop, and their scoop falls through conveniently every fucking time. Uh, we've seen it last coaching search. We've seen it this coaching search. Uh, Auburn plugs just don't know shit about shit. It's just that simple. Uh, the new administration also, as I understand, uh, is a lot more. Well, actually, they've been a lot more airtight for a few years now, which probably goes into the lack of sources. Uh, they have apparently locked it down really well, uh, really for, for, for like the last at least three or four years, as, as I understand. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind, but still, they don't know shit about shit. Um, so from there, I do listen to the national coverage. I feel like national sources know a little bit better. Um, I do, as I understand, Kiffin... West Prim to the 99 yard line, uh, almost a touchdown. Unfortunately, it fell through at the last second because his fucking family was uh, apparently didn't want to move out from where they were at. Understandable. I think Kiffin, if Kiffin was still a bachelor, maybe he would have came out here, but he didn't, obviously. Who cares? Um, if you listen to some of these plug individuals, Auburn had a myriad of fantastic names they released trying to talk to. Uh, I'm going to say this as somebody who is literally just regurgitating rumors. This is not anything that I personally believe uh, went into much depth, but uh, Franklin, Dabo, uh, I, I fucking heard Brian Johnson from the Philadelphia Eagles, um, some other names that are from here and there. I've, I've heard a lot of fucking names. And as you can tell, all those names got joined by fucking Hugh Freeze. If you do, if you don't know this much, Hugh Freeze was somebody that, at the very least, some boosters were interested in last coaching search. Some of our boosters don't give a fuck about morals or, or values or optics, uh, as evidenced by trying to basically lie to get Harson fired. So keep that in mind. Uh, some of our, I mean, as you can imagine, there's a myriad of people out there. Some of our boosters are very holier than, not holier than thou, but are very, um, Optically inclined, very conservative, uh, and they'll, they won't throw their neck out for anything, which probably means, explains why Deion Sanders was not ever a real candidate, because uh, our trustee slash booster slash donors slash everybody else up there at that level fucking suck and are old and primarily Caucasian. Um, 
and they didn't want to take, take the risk. Apparently, there's some prime prep academy risk that's lingering in some school president's mind. Why the fuck Auburn believes it has the aptitude or the value to be picky is beyond me. If you fought Auburn at any length of time, which I've followed for 23-ish years, Auburn fucking sucked at hiring coaches. Uh, fucking terrible at it. And for them to have standards that, that are higher than like a fucking, a, what do you call them, little person? A little person's fucking toenail is absolutely fucking mind-boggling. They absolutely should not. Um, anybody, we we were considering fucking uh, Hubert Freeze a fucking slam dunk hire. Take away the off the field issues from that fucking gnome. Um, that's not a fucking slam dunk hire. That's an okay hire. If it was a slam dunk hire, he would have been hired at Liberty three fucking years ago after the fucking, I, I would say they at least been hired after fucking Malik Willis became basically NFL, uh, you know, first round candidate at one point in time. But because he's not that big of a fucking uh, splash hire for the majority of, you know, people that would want to have a splash hire, still there. Matter of fact, no one's taken. No one has been interested enough in Hugh for to have any kind of real movement from Liberty. It's that one fucking program that considered them last coaching search and then went a different way. Shout out to Alan Green. And then this coaching search, this motherfucker, this lagger, this fucking buzzard is still in, not only in the midst, but the backup playing Lane Kiffin. And now the for, the forefront of the search, if you were to follow uh, the aforementioned uh, plugged-in sources. So now we get into Hugh Freeze. I just have to do all that pretest in case, you know, you're not an Auburn fan or whatever, you don't really give a fuck about how Auburn got to this point. Uh, ineptitude is how Auburn got to this point. Ineptitude, putting all your eggs in one basket, failure. So we get to this point where you now have a large subsection of the fan base adamantly against hiring Hubert as a head coach, as anybody with morals should be this is me it's hurting my own opinion at that point and some subsection saying that well you guys and your fucking holy to die attitude are all gonna hire not hire a great candidate so i'm gonna i want to address that first hugh freeze did when you're at arkansas state got hired by old miss which at that point in time not the best program of all time uh one had a couple good seasons Succeeded in point in part because of the talent that was accrued. I always hate saying the word accrued during his tenure. And keep in mind, before people say everybody's cheating, all this shit, that motherfucker cheated when you had to have some tact about how you cheat. And obviously, with not having the tact of cheating, there's been way different recruiting powers than there were before. Uh, Texas A&M was a, largely an afterthought in terms of being a top-tier program in talent. Now, they they are the talent to the team outside of maybe Texas, you know, Georgia, blah, blah, blah. But it's a different game. I said to say it's a different game everybody's pretty much an even playing for. Ole Miss does not have more resources than, like, fucking 75% of the SEC. Ballpark. If you if you really thought to yourself, what if everybody just threw money out there the way Ole Miss was throwing money out there? They would not have enough talent to really legibly say they can beat down a, I don't fucking know, Kentucky? Like, I think Kentucky could probably out-resource Ole Miss if they really needed to. So I said to say that I put an asterisk to the level of talent that was accrued at that point. And I also put an asterisk to the product that was probably at that point. For one, 2015, I watched Auburn at that point in time. I also watched larger SEC. One of the worst years... In SEC football in the last 12, 13 years. Horrible fucking year. Uh, I believe that year, Alabama was Jake Coker inspiring. Jake, Jake, Coker, Jake Coker led and won a championship. Okay. The SEC East participant that year, I want to say it was Florida, who got the shit kicked out of by Alabama. Um, they were just all offense, no defense, if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't remember. I think that was Jim McElwain's first year, I want to say. And they had a um, pretty decent offense, but like I said, no defense and really not that much top-level talent. That was left for much champ. I don't know defense uh, by that point. Although they had some guys, but overall, death non-existent. And that was the best team of the East. It was like 
that I, I want to just guess and say three to four lost Florida team. Behind them, I think was fucking. Uh, I think Missouri fell at that point for the first the two consecutive uh, title appearances. Uh, Georgia, I think, was maybe a seven win team that year. One of those two years, 2015, 2016. No, twenty fifteen. I believe they were close to ten win team. Twenty sixteen, they were a seven loss team. Um, so that's your that's pretty much how your East shook out, give or take. Uh, the West was just damn near as bad. It was the four net year for LSU. Like they maybe won ten games. Uh, Auburn obviously flamed out uh, under James uh, Jeremy Johnson. Um, just going through my head. That was not a good SEC year. And Ole Miss still found a way to fucking not make the SEC championship even after beating Alabama, the by far preeminent program in that SEC year. Hugh Freeze. Uh, I think 2016 they also contended and uh, also lost a couple games they shouldn't have lost. Uh, to not make the championship again, but I think that was another 10-win season. I think I also got ass-blasted by TCU that year, if I remember correctly. I think so. So, after that, I think it was the uh, sanctions, if I remember correctly. So, basically, out of 2014, which was the Auburn loss and the Treadwell injury, and then nothing out of that playoff contending year. Uh, 2015, basically the same story last no late November loss or late October slash early November loss flamed out. Freeze basically has the repertoire of Gus Malzahn for all intents and purposes during that stretch. Tons of talent, offensive brilliance, a couple of um, Alabama wins, and nothing to show for it, basically. Uh, which, again, it, in a vacuum, it'd be hard to do at Ole Miss and would be in Auburn. I give people that conditional... Gus Malzahn's record at Auburn over that stretch is not as impressive as fucking blah, blah, blah. Also, Hugh Freeze lost to Auburn as a favorite two consecutive years, 2013 and 2014. Uh, 2013 being when Auburn was coming off a fucking 3-9 season. And in 2014, uh, when the game was between three and four, if I remember correctly, and it was in Oxford. So... Basically, all you can really speak about is some 10 win seasons, nine to 10 win seasons, and then beating Alabama twice consecutive years, which is not a fucking thing to sneeze at, but not exactly that far removed from Gus Malzahn. And that's with all the baggage. I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Um, if you watch, if you listen to Split Zone, Split Zone Duo, which you should, they had an episode, I believe, I want to say a month or two before the uh, regular season started. This regular season started, uh, pretty much spearheaded by Stephen Godfrey, who is a Ole Miss alumni. Uh, he still, I think, has a ton of sources. I understand in Mississippi, uh, he was one of the individuals that was. Heavily beating the drum that there was no definitives in the Lane Kiffin uh, signing that occurred a few days ago. That was put by John Silikoff. He even broke, he pretty much like the second that uh, report came out by John, he was up on Twitter saying that there was no confirmation. And as we now see, Lane Kiffin is in Auburn University. Um, so he's very plugged in uh, as far as, I guess, a not reporter college, I don't know what he would be considered, college analyst, college news writer, beat writer, I guess. Uh, but a guy that basically has like no, I guess, home per se, more of a rolling stone of coverage, uh, a freelancer, I guess you might call him. Um, he's relatively plugged in and he's even more plugged into Ole Miss, as you can imagine. And he had a pretty, I think, scathing uh, 20 minutes or so on how Hugh post Ole Miss is a fucking creep. Uh, one of the major parts of that whole diatribe, I guess he gave, was what's now doing the rounds in Auburn Twitter. Uh, the I believe it's a Liberty student. I want to say it's a Liberty student um, that was harassed by Kiffin or, or by Freeze for speaking out against I think it was Ian Cohen. Uh, I don't remember all of the the particulars of this story. Uh, I haven't read up on it again since I heard it in the podcast. So I probably should read up on it again. But basically, uh, she spoke out about him and some of the shady shit that he's did, nasty shit he's did, and she received a DM unsolicited from Hubert. Uh, she has brought up the details once again 
in light of this recent uh, interest from Auburn on her Twitter, so you can go see her shit. I think it's, um, I just type in like Lauren fucking uh, Hugh Freeze. I think you'll find it on Twitter pretty quickly. But it's pretty pretty awful person. I got a call from my mom. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, uh, I said all that to say what I just said a few minutes ago. The problem with Hugh, like people want to do like this repentance thing, people just get a second chance. This motherfucker's already on a second chance. This shit that happened with the, uh, the student was while he's at Liberty. So this motherfucker hasn't even stopped being a fucking weirdo long enough to even have a second chance or a repentant saga. He's still a fucking weirdo now. He's D- he DMs random fucking people if they talk shit about him. He apparently has DM'd, this is in that podcast, but he's listened, he like has fucking got in contact with Godfrey, like, about shit that Godfrey has said about him in the past. Um, you know, it's like an ongoing, it's back and forth between those two. He tries to kind of, you know, expose how fucking much of a weirdo Freeze is to the light, and Freeze, like, I guess basically, like, chortles and, like, fucking gets in the DMs and, like, all this weirdo shit. They have, like, this weird back and forth. But the point being, this guy has never stopped being a fucking weirdo. And unfortunately, a subsect of our uh, fucking uh, fan base is so enlightened by the premise that this guy won 10 games five years ago, seven years ago, in an entirely different SEC, that they're willing to like forget the fact that not only is he, is, not, only is he not a proven elite coach at this point in this SEC, in this day and age of football, um, he's a fucking horrible person. I mean, he's not a good person. I don't know who you should break your program for. I don't know what caliber of coach you should pick, like a fucking terrible person to be your head coach. But I don't think pretty much one stellar season at Liberty and a bunch of mid-pack should, like, quantify you basically hiring a fucking complete joker as your program leader. That's supposed to now, I mean, this, this guy they have to get now. It's supposed to be like pretty much a program resurrector. After getting supposed unanimity amongst the, uh, I've been practicing that one in the car, I'll just drive up here, unanimity um, from your fan base and your trustees and your powers and your AD and all that bullshit. Uh, this one has to be the right hire. You got a fucking mulligan, a, a 10 million mulligan with a uh, Harson, but you can't fuck it up twice. You f- I think it's still a large group of people who believe you fucked it up when you hired or fired Gus in the middle of a pandemic. I believe Gus is washed, not just at Auburn or just period, uh, looking at what UCF has put out there this season. And it's not much better than it was the previous season at UCF. Um, but, but you still fire him in the middle of a pandemic season. And he gave you pretty much what he gave you before. I mean, season four, you blew up two fucking, you know, give me games, probably got you eight and four. Eight and four shouldn't be good enough, but at the same time, it's like you fired him in the pandemic season. Just keep that in mind. Um, so the pretty much the the the, the stage has been set for Auburn to have to do better than eight and four and better than uh, whatever amount of money they gave the horse. And you have to do a stellar hire. And unfortunately, you're looking at a fucking mid pack hire. You're looking at a guy to get you to Alabama, LSU, Georgia. Tennessee, more than likely. Apparently, South Carolina. There's at least five programs in SEC right now that look better than you by a good margin. So then you throw in A&M has far more talent than you on paper. Um, if on Kentucky, that has better coaching you've had for quite a while now. Uh, I mean, that's seven programs I'd take over Auburn at this point. And there's only 14, 13, I can count in Auburn. Um Arkansas looks like they're about to implode, uh, but they still beat you handily this season. I'd say they're probably tied at this point in status. Mississippi State, I mean, Mississippi State, they consistently look like a top four team in the SEC West, which Auburn is like a sister look like that for fucking two seasons. Um, so you could you can make the argument that Auburn's like the ninth best program in the SEC at this moment. I don't mean as as a whole. I mean as of this fucking moment. And then you have two fucking giants coming in in uh, the next three years or so. Auburn could be a double-digit program if you get this fucked up. And I think 
it's looking even if you like move past Hugh, it's looking fucked up. Because you're not getting Franklin. You're not getting Davo. You're not getting Kiffin, obviously. These fucking jokers were not considered Deion Sanders, who's now been offered uh, other jobs. Luke Fickle was like a fucking pipe dream a couple of fans mentioned. Uh, even like a Sonny Dykes. Like, why don't Sonny Dykes leave TCU for Auburn? That's like, it's a lateral move. And we're going to be honest, in the modern day of football, TCU has contended for a title more than Auburn in the last 13 years. Especially if you count, if you don't count 2010, if you go 2011 on, TCU has contended for a playoff spot or title more than Auburn has. Auburn has 2013, TCU was on the cusp of it in 2014, now 2022. And I want to say they had another really good season um, um, in that kind of era that Baylor dominated uh, for the RG3 era. I don't remember which one. And they also beat the shut of Ole Miss in one of those seasons to be a 10-win season. So basically, they've, they've basically been on the cusp of elite football far more consistently than Auburn. You can say it's because of the Big 12, but the Big 12 has had multiple programs that have succeeded fairly well at the same time TCU has done their thing. And you also have, I would say, probably less accessible resources. But maybe they have donors that have money, but I don't know if that's all thrown out there to be accessible at this point. Um, I don't think TCU is that much worse of a job in Auburn in terms of like the things that would be a pro for a coach. In terms of cons, I'd be there for a coach. It's a lot more cons at Auburn than there are at TCU. And that's the thing people don't think about. People think about the fucking pros at Auburn, people being Auburn fans. There's a lot of fucking cons with Auburn that I think at some point we gotta, people got to be honest about this shit. Just because it comes from a national media writer does not mean it's necessarily wrong if it's negative towards Auburn. There's a lot of cons that at some point in your brain you have to think factor into how this has gone on. You don't just keep on missing on good hires because, oh, the fucking board of trustees can't get their shit together. They only want to get guys they can control or blah, 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 fucking blah. At some fucking point, there has to be more than just board of trustees, which is a massive, massive part of why we miss out some guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, basically, we missed out on, as I understand, uh, Napier solely because of the trustees. You missed out on um guy from Oklahoma, Venables, because of a, a lack of unity uh, amongst the higher level of Auburn. So I'm not going to ask it hasn't been a factor. But when you've gone through three searches in the last 13 years... And you only have, I think, three, maybe four good names that would have considered Auburn heavily if it, if you like discount, um, you know, the trustees and their involvement. If Auburn is supposed to be the top ten job it's supposed to be, you should get more than like three or four names out of that whole span of time. I mean, really, what are we saying? Smart, Cristobal, uh, Napier, Venables. Uh, you might have had Gary Patterson back in 2011, maybe. Was that an elite name? I don't think so, but maybe. I mean, he made TCU what TCU is now. I don't know. But you definitely don't have more than, like, six. I mean, I may have missed a couple, but you don't have more than six. If you got a top 10 job, let's say... Let's say vindicated Penn State opens up right now. Like, Penn State now, far removed from the uh, St. Dusky paternal shit. Basically, clean of all that shit. Has went through Bill O'Brien, went through James Franklin, multiple good seasons... They have about as much uh, about as much money as we do, and they play uh, unfortunately in the divisions is about as hard as ours. I will guarantee you at least six names that are good at least call in to Penn State if it opened up right now. I guarantee fucking to you that they would. Now Penn State might fuck it up because there's a fucking fascination with James Franklin, but that's another story. Uh, let's see, LSU, LSU had. Fucking everybody come through. <laughs> and they had some really solid names and then did an about face, uh, kind of slid under Brian Kelly in the door and they got Brian Kelly. They got the top. Yeah, he wasn't available. He wasn't looking at an available name, but they got a top four coach in the game. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, like, this, it's just that the, the, there's not enough for me to think that Auburn, outside of the trustee shit, is as. Bulletproof, as some people make it out to be. I think trustee shit is huge. Don't get me wrong. I think it's like probably the, the if if you had like a, a pie chart, it's fifty one percent at least. It's a majority factor. Don't get me wrong. 
but I don't think it's as big as some people. Some people make it out to be it's the only thing that Auburn is, is being held back by is a lack of uh, unity on that higher level of, of the uh, of our, our pyramid here, so to speak. It's not the only factor. It's not. The only one thing I want to say before I close out here is that getting freeze is going to expose some really, really big things that, uh, really bad things that are also big that some Auburn fans don't want to admit. Some Auburn fans really want to admit or pose that this fan base is not Alabama or Georgia. This fan base has, not fan base, this program has morals that it would not step upon to win games. Hugh Freeze was considered, last search, heavily. The boosters that considered him were outnumbered, as I understand. And the athletic director went in a totally different department uh, than whatever bullshit they were on and got Harson. But he was considered. As I understand, he's been, outside of Kiffin, the only guy that's been a steadfast candidate in this search from day one to day now. And he has probably even more support than he did back then. There is a large amount of people on this fucking shitty ass thing we call the internet co-signing <laughs> Hugh Freeze in abundance. I think I might say Kiff in the past, but Hugh Freeze. Uh, Hugh Freeze in abundance. There are a ton of motherfuckers co-signing this man at this moment. And given the, the I think someone called it Krishnifying, the second chance talk, the... It wasn't severe. Some people make it out to be. Uh, if we get him, he won't. You have a like fucking compliance department. It's out of this world. He won't be able to do all that stuff. <sighs> all that nonsense. All I'm saying is, if you get a Hugh Freeze, this is going to show a lot of people that there's not that that large a percentage of Auburn fans that will be willing to do the right thing quote unquote when it comes to playing football. There's not that many goody two shoes in any ACC fan base except maybe Vanderbilt. But outside of Vanderbilt, almost no fan base I can think of in this conference would turn their nose up that far at doing at hiring somebody they believe is an elite coach that could help them win right now. I think if you could tell let's say I think if you told Tennessee three years ago that the shit Pruitt did, if you play it out again, but he ends up being like a 10-win, 11-win season, 11-win uh, coach every season, I think you say keep it going. Fuck it, keep it going. I think if you told um, – I'll, I'll just forget the hypotheticals. But I'll just say, that, like, basically, fuckery I don't think alone is enough to get any SEC coach – Really, really blackballed amongst the fan base. Maybe amongst the higher ups, because I mean, basically every institution has had to co-sign the existence of Hugh Freeze with Greg Sankey for the last few years. Anybody who's interested in him has had to co-sign that, uh, clear that with Greg Sankey. Nobody can talk to Hugh unless they do that, or unless they can't seriously like get him in the door without clearing him. That's a, that has to happen. So I don't think either. I don't think both the fan base or the top levels of some of these SEC programs really give that much of a fuck about morals or values to say, okay, Hugh is a is a non-starter. That's just not the case. Now, I do think Hugh was shot down a couple of times in the discussion between some fan bases to Greg Sankey. That's another thing altogether. I do think there's a good enough subset of Auburn fans that don't want Hugh Freeze. And honestly, if you look at the Twitter right now, it's divided in such a way where Twitter should not be like your baseline what you're kind of evaluating the fan base being like but it is clear that there are a lot of fans that do not want Hugh Freeze which is a good thing no one should want Hugh Freeze no one if you if you fail in your search if you don't get Kevin if you don't get you know whoever your number two is is not Freeze go for Carnell go for Carnell Williams go for Travis Williams go for somebody as a project piece Go for Deion fucking Sanders. Go for anybody that's a project piece that's high risk, high reward, and then just give them an appropriate contract to that level of assuredness that you have as an institution that they will either succeed or fail. But mother of God, don't get you free. <laughs>